In my last video, I talked about how when bipolar people are in a state of acute psychosis, they can have very spiritual experiences, sometimes even thinking that they're Jesus. However, experiences during acute psychosis can also be quite terrifying. But what's interesting is that even these terrifying experiences can have a spiritual dimension because in some way people have the feeling that the devil is after them. Sometimes people see devils and feel like they're being chased by them. Other people feel like somehow that they're possessed and the devil is inside them. At certain points, some people actually feel like they are the devil in the same way that others have felt that they're Jesus. And then other people will have the devil or demons saying terrible things to them, like that they should kill somebody or kill themselves, that they're shit, that they're worthless, things like that. And so along with very loving experiences of good that we can have in psychosis, we can also have the dark side of the spirit world, experiences of evil. And more than any other, it's these dark and disturbing experiences that are the most difficult for people to work through. And they raise a very important point about the theory behind the videos I've presented up to now. You see, so far I've been saying that an acute psychosis starts when we have a collapse of the ego and you're left to experience your own soul. But if what you're experiencing is your own pure soul, where does the evil come from? Well, in truth, it certainly looks like our souls are not entirely pure. As I've mentioned in other videos, during our lifetimes, we become traumatized by certain things. And if we don't experience all the feelings of our traumas, then they will stay with us as energies, in a sense, contaminating our souls. And on another level, it certainly seems that some of us, if not all of us, have a certain amount of evil born into us when we come into this planet. Now, I know this idea is unpopular with some people, but certainly in Christianity, there is the belief that we are born having original sin. That's why we need a baptism. And from Eastern spirituality, they believe that we come into this world from past lives that were reincarnated. And so if we look at ourselves that way, it could be possible that we come into this world from a past life carrying this karma or negative energies that are records of the sins we've committed in the past. And so based on what these religions have to say, in addition to what I actually see when people go into an acute psychosis, it certainly seems that we are born with a certain amount of lower or negative energies that we need to work through in this lifetime. And from what I've seen, there's no better place to work through these energies than in an acute psychosis. Because it's in this non-ordinary state of consciousness that these energies really come to the surface. And as I've mentioned in other videos, if you're able to embrace and engage these experiences, then the energies associated with them become released and you become a more purified human being. And this all sounds great except for one thing. When these energies are dark and disturbing and evil, it's very easy to go into a state of denial about what's happening to us. And once we're in denial about our own inner experience, then we start to project it. And once you start projecting, then you're in real trouble. Now, what is projection? Well, basically, it's anything that's going on inside of you that you decide is actually happening outside of you that's going on around you. And the most famous form of projection is paranoia. Paranoia comes in a variety of shapes and sizes, but they all have one thing in common. It always feels like someone or something is out to get you. People think that the CIA or the FBI is after them, or that maybe they're being monitored or even controlled by space aliens, or even the Illuminati, whoever that is. It could be your psychiatrist who's spying on you to make sure you take your medication, or even your friends and family that are conspiring against you. For one homeless guy in my neighborhood, his problem is snakes. He's totally concerned that snakes are going to crawl up his pant legs. Germs can also be a big problem because they're invisible and they exist everywhere. And in many situations, the paranoid person will have the feeling that the groups that are after them, although maybe not the snakes and the germs, will have some sort of surveillance equipment to keep an eye on them as well. Paranoid people can have the sensation that their phones are being tapped when they're really not, or that there's hidden cameras in their homes, or maybe even that someone's put a microchip in their brain in order to control them. Now, where does the paranoia come from? Well, I think Dr. Stan Graf has the best explanation that I've found so far, because he thinks that when the ego collapses, often we find ourselves in this cosmic oneness where there's no boundaries. And in that oneness, we can feel connected to everything and it can feel quite good. But the dark side is that if there's no boundaries, then there's also no defenses. And whatever is out there 
can get in here and get to me and attack us. And I think a great example of this is when people start to have psychic sensations. Once in an acute psychosis, people become extremely sensitive and may even have the feeling that they're becoming psychic, reading other people's thoughts. And while some people might enjoy this newfound sensation, other people can have the reverse feeling that, uh-oh, if I can read other people's thoughts, then maybe they can read my thoughts. And that's the paranoid part of the whole thing. Now, as I've said in many videos, I think it's very possible to heal yourself from bipolar disorder and episodes of acute psychosis. However, if somebody is really locked into a series of paranoid thoughts, that healing process becomes extremely difficult. Because the paranoid person is projecting their inner experience and not dealing with it, that means that they're not healing. It's impossible for them to move through the process. Now, while there is the possibility that a very compassionate support team is able to turn the paranoid person around and get them to engage their process, there is also the darker possibility that the paranoid person blames the support team for what's happening to them and refuses their help entirely. In being uncooperative, they might try and escape or run away, and they may even try and attack the support team. And so it's for all of the reasons I just mentioned that someone in a deeply paranoid state will most likely need medication unless they can be turned around quite quickly. Now this may be a shock to people who have followed my work, but what you need to understand is that in a state of paranoia, there's no healing taking place and the person is suffering unnecessarily. And so while it is true that many paranoid people will need medication, I hope that we can use it in the future as a tool and not as a way of life. And what that means is that while the person is being medicated, they're also working to get in touch with the feelings that they were rejecting while they were in psychosis. Because what you normally find is when you meet somebody that's had a very traumatic psychosis, chances are they've also had a very traumatic life. So whether you feel that devils and demons are after you, or you're scared of the teddy bear in your bedroom, in the end, all of these experiences are rooted in the dark and fearful energies that are within ourselves. And while it may be very difficult sometimes, still, the more you're able to work through these energies, the better off you'll be.